to SpaceX now as it is set to launch its first official crewed mission. It is scheduled for a little later today. It will also mark the return of regular launches in the U.S. after nearly a decade. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley were part of what made it all possible, their historic mission to the International Space Station earlier this year, proving that SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule was safe. And thanks to Bob and Doug, yep, Bob and Doug, these four astronauts will depart for its Crew-1 mission a little later today. Today's mission marking the beginning of regular missions into space by NASA astronauts on an entirely privately built spacecraft marking a revolution in human space flight. Well, David St. Jacques spent 204 days on board the International Space Station as flight engineer, and during the mission, he became the fourth Canadian astronaut to conduct a spacewalk. St. Jacques returning to Earth last year in a Russian Soyuz space capsule. In fact, he made his way up to the ISS on a Soyuz rocket. So to talk about the significance of what we are waiting for today, we're now joined by David St. Jacques himself. Uh, Monsieur St. Jacques, thank you for joining us. Hello, Michael. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, listen, let's talk about today's launch. We're just a few hours away now. Uh, talk about the significance. How important will this launch be? This is really the dawn of a new era. Uh, you know, we've been waiting for this ever since I joined the astronaut office 11 years ago. Uh, we've been hearing about these commercial crew the transportation programs and it's just uh, it's just so amazing to see it coming finally we've seen there was the prototype uh, with only a crash test dummy that i welcomed when i was on board about a year and a half ago and then uh, bob and doug as you mentioned were did the first kind of test flight it was a bit you know we never knew how long they were going to stay this is the first kind of scheduled flight where nasa just bought a ticket what well, four tickets actually uh, and uh, <laughs> a bit more like a rental car i guess is the model because you're driving yourself right yeah yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, hate to see so what the insurance really, on that is <laughs> uh, uh, government is self-insured so, yeah there we go uh, the um no seriously uh, the significance is that with this program, we've, you know, private industry have always been involved in the design and manufacture of spacecraft, right? The space station was built uh, by Boeing. The rockets that went to the moon were built by Lockheed Martin. Uh, the space shuttles were built by a consortium uh, of companies. Uh, but this time, it's really private design, private industry providing the funding, the design, the entire sort of strategy with the space agencies only providing requirements, if you want. Uh, and so that has allowed to kind of tap into a whole new level of you know, youthful ingenuity. They hired a bunch of young people who kind of swallowed and studied everything that had been done before and kind of came up with new inventive solutions, such as the fact that this particular rocket that's launching uh, this, uh, a bit later tonight is, uh, is actually mostly reusable. It lands back. That's something that has never been achieved before. Uh, so that really kind of opens up the door for cheaper, uh, more frequent, uh, more easy, accessible uh, t uh, access to uh, Earth orbit. Uh, that kind of allows the national space agencies to shift their focus to going to the back to the moon and eventually going to Mars. So it is a kind of a new, a new step that we're taking collectively. And it's very exciting personally because yeah. I know very well the four people on board you know, uh, Mike Hopkins was a, a classmate of mine in the, uh, the 2009 uh, astronaut class. Uh, Victor Glover was one of the pilots I flew a lot with, someone from the previous cl uh, class just after me. Sean Walker was my commander during the underwater training mission that I did. Soichi was uh, also with my crew when we went under, living uh, in caves for two weeks as part of uh, kind of another standard NASA training. So mm -hmm. uh, it feels both professionally very exciting, personally very exciting, and I as a, you know, as a human being, it is very exciting because yeah. we are kind of taking one, one more step. So exciting, as you say, on a personal level for you. But, you know, this, this evolution that you're talking about when it comes to, to space travel, the fact that you have private industry now involved. But, you know, it's also a real huge evolution from what you went through because, of course, you went up on a Soyuz rocket, came back on a Soyuz capsule. Really technology that hasn't changed in decades. What does it mean, what would it have meant for your own mission if you had been on a SpaceX rather than a Soyuz? Well, so the training flow is very different, uh, a bit sh quite shorter on the SpaceX space because it's more automated and there's fewer kind of ways for the crew to uh, to intervene or back up the automated system. Whereas for the Soyuz, we spend 
over two years training to fly this machine because there's a thousand ways for the crew to intervene and kind of save the day should the automatics kind of fail. So there's more, uh, you know, there's more hands-on, uh, so therefore more training uh, on the Soyuz rocket. Uh, it, it required me to learn to speak Russian first before spending all that time in Moscow at the at their training center. Uh, so you save that, of course, if you train uh, in the U.S. on an American uh, spacecraft. Um, it is, and other than that, I mean, the mission itself, once you're docked to the space station, then it's the same, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Doing spacewalks, using Canadarm, conducting science, fixing the toilet if needed, or <laughs> and all the thousand maintenance. Uh, acts that you have to do uh, to keep you this giant life support uh, system uh, going okay. um, so it's very very but it's uh, I think would have probably been more comfortable uh, you know looking at the cockpit layout uh, you know my first impression going into the the prototype uh, dragon that docked to the space station when I was there it was like ooh suddenly you're like it kind of has this feel of a you know, the business class lounge of a big aircraft <laughs> has that sort of look to it. Well, yeah. you know, let me pick up on that point, though, because, you, you know, you, you mentioned toilets, fixing toilets if need be. But, you know, usually the crew rotation on the ISS limits it down to six members of this crew. But now with the mm -hmm. four going up there, we're talking about seven. How does that change right. life on the ISS? And I have to ask to do it quickly because we're running out of time here. That's right. Yeah, so, well, Space Station is actually sized. To, it can support up to 13 people at any given time. You just eat into your consumables and you have to resupply stuff. But it can support differently seven people. You're just short of one bedroom, basically. So one person is going to have to sleep in the, the, in the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, you know, exercise equipment, we don't have extra, so they're going to have to queue a little bit more. There's all that. There's going to be a bit more queuing, a bit more waiting around. The puzzle of scheduling everybody is going to be a little bit more complicated. Yeah. But there's plenty, plenty of resources. Okay. Uh, you know, as you were talking there, we just added the addition of, look, we looked over there at uh, the, the SpaceX getting ready for launch again a few hours away in Florida. You know, uh, we have about 40 seconds left, but I do want to ask you, as you watch the SpaceX take flight in a few hours' time, what are you watching out for? Is there a point where you know everything's okay? and don't have to be concerned about safety? So astronauts, during a launch, we hold our breath until the engines are shut off and the spacecraft is in orbit. Until then, you're in a highly dangerous phase of flight. So we don't clap, you know, at the takeoff. We clap our hands at Miko main engine cutoff about eight minutes and a half after launch. Okay, you know, David St. Jacques, last time we spoke, you were up in the ISS right now, you're back in terra firma. Thank you for joining us today, appreciate it.